So let's dive into our, our preview before we dive into the uh, the pick'em for the week. And the first question, every week I ask Chris four questions leading into the college football weekend. This week is no different. We will start off with the best games of the week. And I would say, man, I, I, I will tell you this, I am the most excited about Clemson at Pitt. I want to see yep. if Pitt can do it against a good team. I think that's... To me, that is the best game of the weekend. I've got other options, but that that's the one that I'm going to be focused on. How about you? I completely agree. I completely agree with that. I'm kind of shocked that game day didn't choose to go here. Now, I know that Clemson is not a great school right now, but how on earth is anybody excited to watch Oregon football? Okay? You got me. And, and when was the last time game day ever went to Pitt? It has been probably 2010 when they were fighting for, like, the Big East title, maybe. Like maybe so that was it. That, that's 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 my argument. Is you know you, you got a chance to, to to go to one of the big boys. I know they're not good right now, but they still have one of the biggest fan bases in the country. And you know anyway, but I think that's going to be an outstanding game. I think it has potential to be a really good football game. Uh, I guess maybe maybe we can bring up you know Oregon UCLA. That's one of the ones that I had written down because I don't. Like, I do think that – they I mean, they hadn't been to Los Angeles in a long time either, right? UCLA has not been relevant in a very, very long time. So I don't know – I mean, I, I guess you just had to try and figure out which one am I going to get to uh, quicker. Like, if Pitt does win this game, you will probably be at Pitt at some point this season, I think. But this may be your only shot to get out to UCLA. And, you know, if that's the case. Yeah, but who cares if you don't go to UCLA all year? Why would that matter? They haven't been impressive in three weeks either. No, they really haven't. Like, they've got one impressive win on the whole season against yeah, and LSU, they, and that team's terrible. And they got two losses. So, they so got why, stomped so why by does it matter State? if like, you don't go to UCLA? Yeah, it really doesn't. I, part of me wonders if they would rather just be in Los Angeles as opposed to Pittsburgh in you know the middle I'm of October. Sure, Gary. <laughs> I'm certain if you listen, I would rather vacation in Los Angeles too over the weekend than be in Pittsburgh. They uh they have not been at a UCLA game at home since da da 1998. That was okay. the last time they. Is were there a reason they should have gone to a UCLA game in those 28 years or 25 years or? What, 22 years? 23 years? Yeah. I'll, um, I'll give them. Let's see. The last time they went to Pitt was 2005. Uh, Notre Dame played at Pitt on September 3rd, opening weekend. Notre Dame won that one. So, yeah, 2005. Yeah, this this was – so it's been longer since they've been to UCLA, but, I mean, good gracious. Like, what, what are we doing? I don't, But I don't ever care about that. Like, yeah. Like, once it's been 10 years since you've done something, it doesn't matter if it's been 10 years, 20 years, or 50 years. Like, it, like all right, we should get there at some point in time, but we we go to Georgia three times a year, so who gives a fuck? Uh, yeah, you're, you're not wrong. You are not wrong about that. Uh, Oklahoma State and Iowa State, I think, is going to be very oh, interesting. Oh, I, I want to go back uh, to that. Go ahead. Do you think the UCLA – this is an exciting game, not good game, not close game, it's an exciting game. You think that game's going to be exciting? Because I do not. I think it could get very, very boring. I, I will tell you this. I do think that... I think it'll be close. I think it'll be close. But I don't think that equals exciting. I, I tend to agree. I tend to, I think Pitt okay. and Clemson could be exciting. I didn't think, think about them at all for this list. Yeah. At all. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is definitely interesting. Oklahoma State, Iowa State, I think can be exciting. Uh, because both quarterbacks yes. make a ton of mistakes. Right? It, yeah. And Oklahoma State has proven... They can overcome the mistakes. I said on the BetUS show, uh, the winner of this game will be the one that can actually overcome the mistakes made by their quarterback because both of them will make mistakes. And Iowa State has not proven to me that they are capable of actually overcoming those mistakes. Oklahoma State does it week in and week out. I mean, Spencer Sanders threw three interceptions against uh, Texas and, and found a way to... Wait, was it Texas or the week before that? No, it was Baylor. It was Baylor. And they beat Baylor by 10 points. Like... Yeah, you know the the turnovers for Oklahoma State do not matter because Jim Knowles' defense is absolutely legit. Now, if you look at advanced metrics, yeah, it's impressive somewhat, but 
but it's not as impressive as when you actually watch them on the field. And and that that Oklahoma State team is is something serious. So you yeah, know, they they find well, a way to get it done. Just because it's low scoring, or just because it's a defensive game, doesn't mean it's boring either. Like True. those, we've seen plenty of those games that are exciting. I just think right now, UCLA and Oregon. Oregon's one of the most boring football teams to watch. And and I'm gonna tell you this: the the ghost of Chip Kelly that that started that whole run at Oregon is turning over in his damn grave right now. I know Chip Kelly's gonna be in the house, but he's got to look across the thing and think, man, what I used to do at that school, what on earth are they doing now? Uh, true, true. But if you look at UCLA. I mean, he has built UCLA completely differently than the way that he built Oregon uh, back then he in the built day. Oregon. That's right. Yeah, it's a yep. it's a whole different ball game. I got to tell you, I've got a blank here uh, as far as who has the most to gain this weekend. Uh, I, well, I don't, uh, okay, I, don't I got one more exciting game. It's a small oh, game. Go ahead. I think that Fresno. I think that Fresno Nevada game is going to be fun. Uh, yeah, no, I tend to agree with you. I tend to. I agree. think that game is going to be awesome. Yeah, Fresno, Nevada could be a lot of fun. That could end up being, you know, a, a Mountain West title shot kind of game. So, so we'll we'll see about yeah, that one. I, I, think so. I am looking at uh, at a lot of points in that game, and you know, Fresno, like they're favored. We're actually going to uh, pick that game here in just a little bit. But Fresno favored by three and a half. There, little tricky with that hook, you know, little tricky with the hook. So we'll uh, we'll it's see about a that fun one. game. I believe most to gain is it anybody from these exciting games or is it Maybe somebody else that I'm that I'm no. missing. So I, I I know this is going to sound. I've got two, and they're both kind of weird. One, Pitt, just in the sense that how long has it been since you beat Clemson? Like I know Clemson's having a down year, but while the big boy is down, you better get your shots in because because they ain't going to be down for long, and and if you don't get them now, you might not ever get them. And I think it's important to the program not to necessarily vault you up in a ranking or anything like that. The other one, very similar, Purdue. I know that Wisconsin's not good this year, but Wisconsin has bullied you for a long time. And if and if you can get a win over a team that's bullied you for a long time, I think those things matter. So in the AP or in the, the, the whatever polls, it won't matter. In the rankings, it won't matter. But I think those two wins are big for those programs if they can pull them all. I do think those are important. I, I do like both of those, big time. The Purdue situation, I mean, Wisconsin has beaten them 14 straight. Yep. Just for a program builder, for Jeff Brom, that would be massive to get that win. It's, especially it's right very now. important to be able to say, because five years from now, nobody's going to say, yeah, but that Wisconsin team sucks. Like, like at, it just... It's important when somebody's kicked the shit out of you for a long time for you to finally get them. Yes. Yes, I'm with you. Most who lose this weekend, you you may not agree with me here. I'm going to say Iowa State. I, I think Iowa State and Matt Campbell uh, specifically. because Well, yeah, I was about to say Matt Campbell specifically, right? Yes. Well, one, Iowa State, if they, if they have three losses in the first uh, eight weeks of the season, that goes against everything. You haven't even played Oklahoma yet. You know, what in the nope. world is going on? Uh, you haven't played Texas yet. Who knows what can end up I happening I was just about there. to say, they haven't played Texas either. Yeah, if you come out of the first eight weeks with three losses and you were expected to be a playoff contender, or at least uh, preseason polls projected to be a playoff contender, that ain't going to that ain't gonna sell, or I guess sit correctly with uh, with the fan base. While, while the fan base may still love you and everything, uh, people are going to start asking questions like, Okay, so is this it? Is this and and maybe they're totally fine with that, but on a national perception, as far as hype and getting bigger jobs, et cetera, it may not make that big of a difference because this could be just a Kentucky situation where the coach just stays there forever, right? Mark Stoops totally right. content in and, Lexington, and, and well, that's great. I think and listen, if that's what his life is, he can live an unbelievable life in Ames. I would kill for that life. All right, so so like that's not a knock. It just you did have a lottery ticket in your hand. And and it's gone now. So, yes. yes. If you lose this weekend, and there's a there's a little bit of a gut feeling for that. Yeah. Did you have another one that's that's most to lose? No. I mean, everything is just like a. They would have to be big upsets for for the team to have something to lose to actually lose. And I mean, so I just don't. 
Yeah, maybe maybe we I mean, could every say week Oregon. we could say Cincinnati. Every week we could say, you know, I don't think Oregon has anything to lose because nationally, I don't think anybody expects anything of them. I know they don't have a lot of L's in the column or, you know, losses in the, in the win-loss column, but, but nobody actually thinks they're a good football team right now. True, true. But it, the deal is if you get to that second loss already, uh, the playoff stuff is completely out of the door. And, and I do well, I think, think the playoff, but that's what I'm saying. I think the playoff stuff is already out the door. Like if they won out right now, and even one out impressively, I think everybody says it doesn't matter. This team's not very good. We're not letting them in. We're just not. You, I, I legitimately think people who have barred the door from the small guys would say, Cincinnati, get your ass in here. We're not, we're not putting Oregon in this thing. Yeah, yeah, you could be right about that. Oregon uh, sitting at number 10 right now, and the team that they beat already this year, Ohio State, is all the way up at number five as far as the AP poll. So, yeah, that I, I, could, I could see where you're coming from. Playoff sleeper. I put Pitt down this week because if you get a win over Clemson, yeah, you start to look at that schedule and, you know, while while we may not think super highly of Pitt, I mean, they did lose to Western Michigan. They have turned a corner. This offense is legit. Kenny Pickett is, he's he's putting up Heisman type numbers. I mean, just at 21 uh, touchdowns, two interceptions. He's he's about as legit as you can get. And I am I'm just shocked. At, at this Pittsburgh team and what Pat Narduzzi has built here, they could certainly find themselves on a bit of a playoff run. I mean, they have killed teams. Since that Western Michigan loss, they have been smoking everybody by at least three touchdowns and, and in most cases, more. Uh, but if you beat Clemson at home, you got Miami at Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, and Syracuse. And there's nobody on that schedule that, that super scares me right now. So... You know, you, you get through this, and, and at this point, I don't know that Pitt would even have to play Clemson in the ACC title game. Uh, I mean, they, they would be in the Coastal, but I, that, that, would be, that would be interesting. So, you got, a, you got another playoff sleeper. No, but I also don't think it's Pitt either. Nobody's going, nobody's coming out of that conference. They're just, they're just not. I mean, you, you are probably right, but, you know, if anybody were going to, they would at least have the option uh, or the possibility, right? Uh, Wake is still sitting there undefeated, but I'll tell you right now, I would take Pitt over Wake today, like today, tomorrow. Well, yeah, but would you year. take Pitt? Would you take Pitt over NC State right now? I think that one would be a little closer. Um, I would not. I I like Pitt. Now offense. NC State's playing somebody that can beat the hell out of, right? So that, we're not having that conversation because that game doesn't matter. I think. If I remember correctly, now uh, they might be playing a good team. Oh, they're playing Miami. Yeah, they're yeah, playing Miami. They're playing so. a team that should beat the hell out of. <laughs> exactly. But that line's um, only three and a half. Isn't that funny? It's it's weird. It's very strange. If NC State loses this game in Miami, I'm. Well, we're I'm just done with the curious. ACC. We're just done with the ACC at that point. So, ah, uh, good gracious. Good gracious. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.